If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, everybody. Guess what? Uh, what? It's Mind Pump. Look. It's Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk a lot about awesome fitness stuff. But for the first 49 minutes, we do our introductory fun time conversation. Here's what we talked about in that first half of this episode. We gave a little recap of our thousandth episode celebration. We recorded that episode in front of a live studio audience. It was a party, so We had a lot of fun. Then Justin talked about his weekend at the air show. Uh, if you listen to that last episode, Justin talks about what it was like to be in a jet um, getting his insides compressed and squeezed. Ooh, yeah. The next day, he went back and watched which is, with his kids. He gives us a little rundown. Much more relaxing. Then we talked about a study that shows that marijuana may be connected to increased psychosis in certain individuals. Now, this got me ranting about how CBD, a cannabinoid found in cannabis, but also found in the hemp plant, actually can be used to counter psychosis based off of some preliminary studies. And of course, we talk about our favorite source of healthy and legal cannabinoids, Ned. Ned Ned produces high quality hemp oil extract that combines or contains, excuse me, all of the beneficial cannabinoids that you can find in hemp. And we got you a fat discount. If you go to hello, Ned, H E L L O N E D.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then we talked about how Walgreens is going to start selling CBD here we go with the CBD bubble. It's not good oh, quality, man. though, I bet. Here it comes. We talked about how the use of cannabis has changed over the years and why strains are so high in THC and might be causing some of these psychotic episodes. Adam talked about a new series on Netflix about Tupac and Biggie called Unsolved. I'm excited for it. Uh, we talked about how Ben Pikulski is now going to be eating only meat for a little while, and we hope he's getting his meat from ButcherBox. ButcherBox delivers to your door, grass-fed, high-quality meats at amazing prices. In fact, if you use our link, you get an additional discount. Here's what you do. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get $20 off and two packs of free bacon and two pounds Ooh, that breakfast bundle. of pork breakfast sausage with your first order. That's not all. You'll also get free shipping. Then Adam talked about how he moved his... 500 pairs of shoes. I wish I was exaggerating. <laughs> Sal did the math, everybody. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Then we got into the fitness portion of this episode. The first question was, what are the pros and cons of training with a weighted vest? Are there benefits? Are there jet- detriments? And how to use a weighted vest properly to build and sculpt your body? Next question, what are our opinions on power building? Right now in the bodybuilding world, we've got some people saying that they don't bodybuild, they power build. This is where they lift weights with heavy, heavy ass weights for low reps. Are making things up now? They might be. They Mm. might be. Are there benefits? Are there detriments? Find out in that part of this episode. Next question. Somebody's asking us which diet trend we think has caused the biggest problems, adverse effects in society. We talk about veganism. We talk about paleo. We talk a little bit about keto. And then we talk about, of course, the modern Western diet, which has pretty much made everybody fat. Yeah. And the final question, uh, what is each of our Enneagram type? So we all took a pause, did a test online, um, and we all reveal what our Enneagrams are. And also, I'd like to remind everybody uh, that MAPS Fitness Products is where you're going to find a MAPS program that will fit your needs. We have different programs for different goals and different types of experience. So let's say you're a total and complete beginner but you want to reap the benefits of resistance training, get MAPS Starter. Great place to start. If you've been working out for a little while and have some experience and you want to build your metabolism, you want to fast your metabolism, or you just want to build general strength and muscle, well, that's MAPS Anabolic. Let's say you want to sculpt your body like a bodybuilder. That's MAPS Aesthetic or MAPS Split. Let's say you want to move like an athlete. Like your favorite part about working out is how awesome you can move. You want to do different kinds of exercises. You want to have fun in the gym. That's MAPS Performance. Let's say you want to get real creative. That's MAPS Strong. Anyway, the bottom line is we have a lot of MAPS programs. In fact, if you really are serious, your best bet is to do our Super Bundle, which combines MAPS programs together, lays them out for you, and it gives you one year 
of exercise programming. In other words, all your workouts are planned out for you, all your phases, all your reps, all your sets, everything set up for the next year. You better believe you're going to look like an awesome human being at the end of that. Absolutely. Again, you can find all of these programs plus the super bundle at mapsfitnessproducts.com. T-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Oh, yeah, you know I love this day. (laughs) All righty, we have ourselves five review winners. For iTunes, we've got Nick K51, J Bunk 414, MC Fit 23. For Facebook, we have Laura Lay, Chavez, Bradley Dapper. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, include your Instagram handle, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Thanks for your support. I have a question for Justin. What's that today? question, Justino? You know, you know, you don't seem like a, um, <clears throat> what's the word? Like a fitness guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. That's not what I was going to say. Yeah. That's fucked up. Dick. Is that how we're going to open the show? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, no, you're not like a uh, like a bougie kind of person. You're not really no, picky about no, certain things. not at all. But I do notice that you will only drink two types of water. Oh yeah, Avion or Fiji. Yeah, nothing else. Right. You're a little bit of a a, a water. I, what do they call it? What's a what would it be like a water snob? Snob. Yeah. Why? I don't know. They just taste better. Really? Is that it? Well, it's that, and also I remember uh, Paul Check when he was on. Like, I don't think he brought it up on the show, but we were like out at the <laughs> grocery store, and I just watched what he buys and like his justifications for it, and he like did this whole uh, spiel about. Avion and why it was like superior, and I was like, "Okay, I'm sold." Did he really? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm drinking Avion now. You see? Remember? Yeah, he brought it up. I knew, I knew he ha- he was drinking Avion, but I don't know that he had a reason for it. Yeah, there was some reason for it uh, in terms of like how they source it. I don't, I don't remember the specifics. I just was like, "No, you, I can confirm. I remember it too. I yeah. remember it was. I was. It was enough for me to go. The next time I went Bob Water, it's what I bought for sure. Yeah, really? like if there's a choice for it, I usually like. It. I'm drawn to that more than you know the rest of the options. You want to you want to take a shower on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make so much money that your bathtub's full. Yeah, Avion. it's like isn't gold. Avion backwards naive? Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. No, I'm just kidding. It Na- is not, is it really naive? No, it's not. Uh, yeah, no, it's kind of a little <laughs> bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um. Uh, the thing about double zingers. The today. thing about water and plastic bottles that that has just got discovered not that long ago that bothers me a lot is that they find microplastics in all bottles of water. Yeah. And it's because of the processing uh, of how they cap the bottles and put like little shards of plastic. Uh, that makes sense. Make tend to mad. get in there, and that it goes in your body, and it stays in your body. And then they warm up too. Don't, I have an answer for all of this. Don't worry. You do. It's coming for you guys. Oh, oh I know. Right. That's right. right. Yeah. Taylor and I have been working on something. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. right. I knew yeah. all about that, yeah. Yeah. Dude, dude. So dude. that uh, that thousandth episode was a good good time, huh? Yeah, always a oh, great. That time. was so nice, dude. Man. Having people in here, so much fun, man. What great people they were. Yeah. I, I, I really, really enjoy talking to them and meeting them and, and just seeing faces. Because, you know, you're all, we're, we're on the podcast. We're talking out into the ether. Mm-hmm. And we don't necessarily see the people who are, you know, listening to us or impacting, you know, who, who are impacting or whatever. We get to meet. We had 15 people here in the studio. Some of them as far as New York, Boston, and Florida. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Shout out to the cool. East Coasters for yeah. sure. Yeah, good for them. Big man. ups to them. I was, you know what I was surprised is... I really anticipated so you know for anyone to to fly that far away I thought for sure would be like our OG OGs people that have been around since you know Mind Pump 1 right but there was only a, a maybe two or three that had listened to all the episodes most of them were like 6 months to a year yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that I was not I was not prepared for that I thought for sure I would recognize all the faces and know know them all because they've been in our forum for two three years because we have a you know when the the forum originally grew the three of us were able to talk to those 10 people all the yeah. time right and then yeah. then it was 50 still communicating so even when the few hundred right when well, even there was about 300 or so in there I felt like I knew all of them by first name and and knew them well so to see uh, the group that we had that showed up I thought that and it makes me it makes me really excited for mind pump mimosas now oh yeah because and this was a very young crowd. Yeah. I mean, they were all like 20s. I don't know if anybody here was in their 30s. No, they were all in their 20s. One guy was 20, had just turned had 20. Had just turned 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Such a young, beautiful face. Yeah, no, it was fun. <laughs> uh, it was uh, slightly inappropriate. It I was a, it was a it was a good time. <laughs> give him a compliment. Yeah. yeah. How did you guys feel about how we were? Uh, you know, with the with the crowd in front of us, I uh, thought it was kind of uh, cool, right? We were amped a little. Uh, a little hyper. Yeah, they got us uh, energized. Well, we also, I mean, when was the last time we drank on an episode? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can't. It out there. It was a little bit of a throwback. Yeah, yeah. we had. We, I don't care. I can't remember the last time that we drank. I mean, we used to. The funny part was that we used to do it to calm nerves at the, early on when we first started. Yeah. This was at a celebration. Yeah. Totally. Um, but I, it, I think we're better. Not so- typical. Yeah. I think we're better sober. I think so. You know, you know what it is. Well, I think when you're when you're drinking and you're buzzed, you feel like you're better while you're doing it. <laughs> then afterwards, yeah. you're listening. Like, oh. I think that's in a lot yeah. of things too. Yeah, I don't think it's just podcasting. You it's think. A, like when you smoke a joint, <laughs> oh, yeah. the, a the shit talking ramps up quite a bit. Yeah. You're like, I got a great idea, and you're like, write it out. And then yeah. the next day, when you're sober, you read the idea, and you're like. Uh, Should have thought of this yeah. a little Triangle longer. tires? Why did I write that down? That makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> wow. I need to be round. Yeah, that, you know, this was sense. the uh, this of all the events we've done, though, the least exhausted I was afterwards. I wasn't so bad. Yeah. I, I thought that um, I thought I would be really tired afterwards. Normally when we talk for a really long time like that or with lots it's of people. It's because it's so much energy. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Right. It was kind of weird because I was coming from that flight to the next day for this event. And I was looking forward to that event actually like for a long time because I, I don't know. I just love having like in studio the, the energy yeah. everybody brings with that was like exciting. But it was like I almost had this like adrenaline dump, you know, the next day. And I was like, it took me a while to ramp back up. Uh, but, yeah. uh, yeah, it was a different Did you do field. anything this weekend or were you just tired? Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I went to the air show on Saturday and I did that mainly because of, of the kids that kids had so many questions about, you know, what it was like for me, you know, on the plane and everything. And I was like, let's just go, you know, we got these tickets. He like offered to give me these tickets, like VIP to go in and check out like what they actually do. And so I'm really glad I did. We brought the two cousins with us as well. Mm. And just checked out all these cool planes and everything, but um, and they got to hang out and say hi for a second. Now, so. how different of an experience? Have you been to air shows before? No, that was the first time. I've oh, ever okay. Been. okay. Well, what was the experience like having been on one of those planes? You know, the d- two days before or whatever. Right. Like, how was that experience seeing it now from the outside? Oh yeah, no, it brought it full circle for me. It was crazy because you could see how like intricate and disciplined they were and their flight patterns and like how orchestrated everything was. It was so fucking like impressive knowing what that probably feels like in the <sighs> cockpit, you know? And so, uh, yeah, it was just cool. Cause then now like Courtney was a little bit like super excited, you know, she was like trying to, Oh, do you know this guy? And like trying to like point out the, the pilots walking by. I'm like, just dude, calm down. <laughs> I'm trying to blend in. She's trying to, you know, I was just trying to be like a a fly on a wall kind of a thing, and she's like all trying to like, oh, let's go talk to him. Like, no, no, just let me chill out. Introduce me to the hot fighter. I mean, the the guy. That's honestly that's what's happening. Just like the rodeo thing. Now it's this thing. It's like, oh, all these guys in uniform and and whatever, and she's getting all hot and bothered by it. (laughs) You you should ask. Did you? You should ask her to keep the jumpsuit. I know. Right. I should have. Yeah, that would have been smart. The one that was snug on the cakes. Maybe I'll ask him. I'll be like, hey, cut, you cut guys got an extra out. one you're throwing out? You know, uh, I could use this. <laughs> That's hilarious <laughs> for damage. But anyway, so the your kids enjoyed the show. Everybody enjoyed the show, dude. They were they had so much fun, man. It was exhausting. It was like, dude, like you could walk for 20 minutes and not even get to half of what was there. Mm. And uh, it was just, uh, it was great. I bought them these little like toy. Um, uh, fighter jets, thunder, thunder jets, and so they were like super into it. But and- dude, these, those guys are surgeons in the air. I've been to a couple shows, and when you watch the precision, you realize like there's not even there is zero room for error in what they're doing. But then to hear from Justin what it feels like to be under those G's and the pressure of flying. How in the fuck are they able to operate? That is just mind blowing to me. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. And watching them all do that and like all the different stunts. They did all these stunts I didn't even know they, you know, had in the lineup. They just like threw them in there. And it was cool because they would have them like one, like a group of four would come and everybody's eyes are on that, but don't mm-hmm. see the two that are just about to cross right in front of you, like real close. And they, it's like a, a distraction thing. You know, you're like looking out here and then all of a sudden, just boom, they the hit you with that. Yeah. And you jump out of your seat. Yeah. So. I remember one I went to, I think it was Blue Angels, and you're looking over here and not even realize that one's coming from over here hella fast. Super fast. And yeah. that shit goes, flies over you so fast that the sound followed. So it's like, and then, <laughs> you're like, yeah. oh shit. Yeah. Crazy. And they had an F-22 Raptor, like, doing just by himself, like, just 
showstopper. Yeah. Like everybody was just like, oh my God, this is a spaceship, just what it can do. Now, are these shows, I would imagine these shows are totally funded by the military, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. It was free. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the military pays for all this. Like the, the, the planes, yes. they pay the pilots to do this. Yeah. This is, I mean, I mean, you think about it. There was 100,000 people there. It's obviously to attract young kids. It's, right? it's smart propaganda. It's, it's great recruiting. Yeah, because we yeah. have a, um, a voluntary military. And so they, act, like a business, they have to spend money on yep. positive PR. So did you know that if you were to make a movie, let's say we were all going to make a movie about a war or something like that, if we showed our military in a good light, that we could actually ask them for money. And they would actually give us money to make a movie that would show them in a good light. They actually do that. Interesting. That is interesting. Isn't that wild? Maybe we'll have to make. What is the difference between Blue Angels and Thunderbirds? Navy and Air Force. (laughs) Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Same planes, right? Are the same planes? I think they're the same type. Yeah, the, I heard too that the um, the Blue Angels actually don't wear any G suits, like, and so their whole thing is they have to like you know work on this core uh, ability to be able to handle all those forces. Oh my but like, god! Yeah, like the co- cockpit's different, I guess, in, in their planes. So which one's which? I don't know who's who's. So there. Air Force is Thunderbirds, and then uh, yeah, Blue Angels are Navy. Now is there is there like like a little bit of internal competitiveness amongst them? Dude, they, oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm are you sure. kidding me? You ever, they, they love to compete with each other for yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, there's a, tons of rivalry. So the oh, so they're Hornets. They fire yeah, uh, F A eighteen Hornet. Yeah, different plane. Yeah. that's what the Blue Angels are. Yeah, 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 very cool. Yeah, that's all. Have you guys ever read the the stories of back during the Cold War? how we, we had this special spy plane that we made. And I think, Doug, maybe you can look this up. I think it was called the U-2 spy plane. Yeah. And we would fly this thing so fast and so high, mm-hmm. like literally almost like in space. Yeah, the border of the atmosphere. Yeah, and, and, the, and they would fly it, and then they'd spy on the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. But the apparently to fly this thing and to be able to do this was insane. So the guy who flew this was like this crazy, crazy fighter pli- pilot. Right. Who got all these you accolades? Get no oxygen up there. Yeah, like like uh, just going up and then coming out of that, you know, uh, into the atmosphere. That's the plane right there. Uh, the, yeah. It's the U two Cold War spy plane. How high did that thing go? Maybe we can look up the the, the height. But I, w- I remember reading about this, and during that time, the, and I believe it was these spy planes that saw the the missiles going into Cuba. 70,000 feet. Holy shit. Yeah, that's way up there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's rumors that they, they have planes that are... Because uh, you know we have submarines that are nuclear powered, mm-hmm. which means that it could basically be out in the ocean like 10,000 years. Yeah, yeah. Like, they never have to like like come back and fuel or anything. You know, they just stay crazy. out there forever. I heard they were like, they had uh, like drone like submarines yes. and things like that that are supposed to be like roaming eventually, we like just, just indefinitely. You put them in the ocean, yeah. they're nuclear like, powered. See you later. And they're there in case that, shit goes down. That trips me out. Or they'll, they'll have like a plane that could just fly above forever. I mean, I would guess it's already happening, right? Probably. Probably, yeah. Probably. Would, if we have the tech to do so. it. I yeah. wonder what kind of secret shit they have that we don't even know about. Like yeah. the like the um, when the the first Iraq war happened, um, what was it? Gulf Storm mm-hmm. was that the first one? When we did the what were those stealth the stealth bombers? That's the first Desert time we Storm. saw yeah. first time we saw stealth bombers. You know, dropping bombs. Yeah, that technology apparently they had that for like 30, 40 years. Long something time like that. ago. Yeah, yeah, all at uh, Area fifty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. All that out. <laughs> and then, yeah. and we apparently it was aliens. And apparently they are the ones that put out the alien. Counter, of course, because they want to distract uh, the public. Yeah, yeah, they don't want you leaking information to Russians, dude. So crazy. <laughs> Talking about all this crazy stuff reminds me of the study that I read uh, over the weekend. So this big study came out, and I believe it was out of the UK, that connected uh, high levels of or uh, high frequent use of strong marijuana to psychosis. Wow. So what they found was that that when These people are predetermined people towards psychosis, like epigenetic wise, or no, they didn't, I don't think they went that far. But what they're finding is they're they're connecting people who use a lot of weed with more higher instances of of uh, symptoms of psychosis, and they and this is a pretty it was a decently well made study, but it also goes in line with other studies now. Can you define psychosis? For yeah, um, schizophrenia. Okay. You know, psychotic uh, thoughts. You know, high levels of paranoia. That kind of stuff. I tell you what, uh, I don't doubt it. Right. I know how I have felt on too much cannabis, oh, especially when you go deep. 
Yeah, and, I know and, what that can do. And you know what they're making now. I mean, we of course, like always, dabbing and everything. Else. Yeah, the concentrate. I mean, I've felt that way off of just smoking too much marijuana. Mm-hmm. Like if I, when I the first time I got introduced to it, I had such a bad experience with it because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. You know. lost your mind. Yeah, it was awful. Just way too much and paranoid like crazy. Never felt that before. And that was just off of the flower. I can't imagine. If somebody would have introduced me to something like the the, the dabbing, like the, well, here's that's... here's the problem. That's that's a big part of the problem. Big part of the problem is we have people are seeking out cannabis mainly for its, uh, and you're seeing more people now using it for other reasons, but mainly for its intoxicating effects. <clears throat> and so what ends up happening is we keep breeding marijuana to be stronger and stronger in THC. And we stop paying attention to other things. So, on uh, to counter this study, because I've had people send this to me, and I, I think it's true. Yeah, it, people smoke a lot of strong, high THC weed, and if they're already kind of predisposed a little bit, which people who smoke a lot, here's the other thing you want to consider: people who smoke a lot of strong weed probably already have some issues, right? That doesn't that like, well, a, like an you, average person. Didn't yeah. you tell me to do? I mean, I've been doing this. At least tell me if I'm using my my Ned wrong, but. You know, anytime I have like a real high THC strain that I smoke, I just automatically go over to my my Ned dropper and I drop like one drop in. I, I was just gonna say mm. studies. Then the, there's lots of studies that are showing that CBD um, changes the brain patterns of people with psychosis hmm. to look more like normal brain patterns. And they've done other studies where people who use CBD with THC. Far less instances of psychosis, even during high uh, high amounts of use. So CBD itself um, has kind of this counter balancing hmm. effect, and we know that CBD by itself has got some anxiolytic properties and calm, kind of calming properties. But it also kind of balances out some of the potential negatives. I read another study that showed that CBD with high THC cannabis reduces or minimizes the short term memory loss. That you get with, uh, oh, wow. with, so with it mitigates a lot of those. Yeah, uh, and, and here's the thing. This is an interesting thing now. Um, natural marijuana for a long time was not yeah. super high in THC. Yeah, we bred it to be that way. We did. It, you know, if you you go back just you know 50 years, strong cannabis. I mean, it, it existed where there was cannabis that was like 15 percent THC, but most of the stuff you bought on the street was like five. 5% THC, 7%. Shrag. And so you talk to people who smoked weed in the 60s and 70s, and they'll say, oh, yeah, I used to smoke a whole joint, and I'd get kind of high. Now if I take one hit, like i got to be careful. And so what happened is over time, the black market is really what did this. Whenever you have something that's uh, a black market, uh, because it's restricted, it tends to get much stronger. Like if you buy opiates in the black market, they're going to give you a strong dose versus if you were to get it, you know, prescription or if it was more of a kind of an open market type deal. And so people just bred marijuana to get stronger and stronger and stronger to now where, I mean, when I got my, when my ex-mother-in-law had cancer and I went to the cannabis store to buy her marijuana, I remember the strong strains were like 18% cannabis. So what do you Now think- I'm seeing 23, 24% uh, of THC. So how much of the Ned do you think I should use? So, you know, they have what the three different levels, right? It goes 250 milligrams. It goes, I think that's seven. total cannabinoids are counting. Right, yes. right. 1500 is a strong one. Uh, right. And then 1500. So I've had all of them, right? I have, this, I have the, I would go one full dropper full with, uh, with cannabis, knowing how much yeah. you use. Which so is I'm interested hits. too, cause I've been taking Ned a lot with my, my morning, like nitro, uh, oh great! As a combo, be, and I'm I feel like it helps to kind of mitigate a little bit of the shakiness, mm-hmm. you know, involved with like like a high dose of caffeine well, for me. Where didn't you? Did you try that? You sent a picture over some company. I did, and and that it had was, it infused, right? It was infused with hemp oil, so that was interesting. I thought it was interesting. It wasn't bad flavor. It wasn't bad experience. So. It's something that uh, I thought was kind of interesting. See, I would just rather try it. I'd rather use the Ned where I can I can control it. I can do it when I smoke. I can do it in when I'm having coffee. Yeah. I can do it. However that was I a want better to. feel for sure. Well, the thing you got to keep in mind that's always interesting to me is that you know the plant naturally, the way it grew naturally, it was much more balanced. We just bred it to squeeze out as much THC as possible. But if you got some of this old cannabis that's high in CBD and it's got you know it's got CBD and THC, far less likely to have some of these negative side effects. Now, as far as supplementing CBD from hemp oil, which I think is the way to do it. Um, here's the problem with that, and I've said this a lot of times. The hemp oil stuff that's on the market is garbage for the most part. Mm-hmm. The only one that I've been satisfied with, and the, and that's why we're working with them, is Ned, 
Ned actually provided us with uh, independent lab uh, tests. And when you look at those tests, you see, oh, here's all the cannabinoids. Here's how much CBD. Here's how much CBC. Here's how much, you know, the terpenes that are in there. It's, so you know you get it because these other hemp oils are just... And I can tell. I've used well, CBD yeah, before. They're garbage. I mean, the hustle. It's still. It's so They're new. They're throwing that, it in everything. That everyone's pixie dusting. Uh, pixie dusting everything. Right? Mm -hmm. Did you guys see what's going on with Walgreens? Walgreens is uh, just announced that they'll be carrying over fifteen hundred stores. Will now be selling CBD products. Yep. Oh, it's blowing up, dude. Yeah. It is Big blowing time, up. You got to remember to ask our, our our Ned guys if they're going to get in there because that's probably be a huge huge contract for them to to land something like yeah. Walgreens. Yeah, I wonder because I'm I'm sure like they're probably going to get like a lot of the. I mean, they get the cheaper type supplements to begin with, you know, like the protein powders and all that. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see if they get quality stuff in there versus just like the cheap shit. Yeah, what it, you know what this reminds me of is um, like for example, years ago uh, a supplement came out into the muscle building world and it was uh, called ectisterone which is this plant hormone it's also found in insects and in human studies some old soviet era human studies showed that it built muscle and strength so you had all these supplement companies when that's when those studies came out this was back in the 90s all these supplement companies like oh we sell ectisterone people were taking it and they're like it doesn't work now the reason why they said that is because it didn't really have ectisterone because when you took the real ectisterone it was expensive mm -hmm. and you could feel that it actually worked yeah. this is what's going to happen with cbd because everybody says they have it and it's shit and they're putting like one milligram or nothing in there right people are going to use it and they're gonna be like it didn't work it didn't help me with my anxiety i didn't get better sleep i didn't have less inflammation and they're gonna be like cbd doesn't work no, you didn't even you didn't really have CBD. You got to go with like quality. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything right. out of yep. it. It's just going to be fatty acids. Well, and and, and, oil. and still going back to what we we always say about any any supplementing with anything, you still got to take care of all the the big rocks first. I mean, if you're if you're using CBD oil for recovery and to you know bring okay. down anxiety, but then and you're, you're sleeping four hours a night. Right, you're sleeping four hours a night. <laughs> you're eating shit food. You're not exercising. You've got poor relationships. Yeah. Like you. You got all these other things that are happening. It's like uh, I don't know. I, don't, I had a yeah. I had a buddy of mine who you know years ago I gave him uh, Maps Anabolic um, to test when I first created that program, and he was giving me his progress. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm not really seeing any progress. I'm not getting stronger." So I'm like, "Let's. What does your day look like? Like, what are you doing?" Like, the guy was eating like thousand calories a day was getting no sleep and i was like yeah dude of course it's not gonna fucking work bro <laughs> you gotta get some sleep and start eating some damn food right you take care of yourself yeah it's yeah. not miraculous yeah. right did you guys see the uh the tupac and biggie netflix series what so listen to this so my cousin i, I text my cousin the other night um if he had if he'd watched uh, any new movies or or netflix series that maybe i hadn't heard of and he was telling first he told me he's like you know aquaman was decent he goes if you haven't watched that watch that uh and he goes um i assume you watched the tupac biggie thing already mm -hmm. i was like nah i didn't watch that and he's like what he's like i think you're like mr tupac you love oh. i said that's why i didn't watch it i said i've pretty much seen every i have i own all the documentaries on both biggie and tupac i've pretty much read and watched everything out there on them and so it's kind of like you know what else are they mm -hmm. going to tell you and right. he's like oh Go watch it. So it's all like the conspiracy of everything? Dude, it's that good. It's a 10-part series. Huh. I'm, I'm on nine. I binged fucking nine hours of this shit over the last two days. No, you did it. Yes, I did. Oh, no. It's that good. Okay. Wow. It's really, really good. It's reenacted, so they they have real actors, yeah. so that made it really good, too, just because it was done by real oh, maybe actors. Maybe I'll watch that tonight. And hmm. they get into so much more stuff that I just did not have any clue about, and I don't want to spoil any of it, but if you're somebody who uh, cared about that story or was interested in that mm -hmm. story at all, uh, that series was... And I passed it over like three or four times because I was like, eh, I'll get to it. I'm not really... I've heard everything already. No, nah, this is yeah. I like this trend of revisiting, like uh, right these yeah these major events and things. Like we didn't get all those details. Yes, yeah. they were withholding a lot of information. And I from didn't us. Re I didn't realize that his mom opened up the case in two thousand and seven again. Oh, mm. did she sued 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 uh, LAPD or Compton PD for four hundred million? Oh wow! Yeah, so that gets into all of that, and they huh. and they so they take it, they 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 tell the story really cool because they tell it like um past uh present and they kind of hop back and forth like what was going on back then when it was happening and so they have they have like tupac and biggie acting in it you know or like people that are acting mm -hmm. as them 
And then it's like 2007, the, the cops that are digging through the case and trying to figure out where the ball got dropped and how is it possible to the most famous people in the yeah, fucking, we don't know who the fuck we don't know who did it. Like, how is this possible? I think people know who yeah. did it. They oh, just, just don't want it. They, oh. they, they just don't want nobody wants to talk yeah 100 percent. that whole world you know what yeah, i mean it's like the mafia some like cover up yeah, for something sure, happens everybody shuts their mouth for sure for sure a worth if you if you like that if you're into the the biggie tupac story yeah. at all um best uh documentary series i've seen yet on it what's by, it called by far it's called unsolved. unsolved unsolved it's on netflix you know what this makes me think of is do you guys ever think that these people would these people be regarded as Amazing and groundbreaking and breakthrough if they were still alive. Yes, you think so? Oh, not even in close of yeah, for sure. Well, I Tupac mean, for sure, but Biggie. I mean, Biggie. Look, no disrespect, Biggie was great, but I don't. I don't know how people compare him to Tupac. Tupac had way more. Well, I'm with you on that because yeah. I'm. A, I was more of a Tupac fan, and uh, just stylistically, they're very different, yeah. right? Um, I mean, I loved Biggie. Uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's just he didn't have nearly as much. I mean, what people forget. I mean, they died at well, twenty. Tupac tw- was so poetic. Twenty four mm-hmm. and twenty five. Mm-hmm. I mean, they both they both died so young, and they did so much in that short period of time. I mean, their teenage years to early twenties. But you think that if they if they didn't die, that they would still be regarded the way they are? Because sometimes that happens. You know what I mean? Like like Nirvana, great band. I wonder if you know Kurt Cobain dying made them elevated them to like, oh, they're the uh, yeah, they're understand. the kings of alternative or you know right. whatever. You know, I wonder if that does something. Well, oh, I, I, I think it does, right? Yeah. I, I think it does to a point. Um, yeah. But I think they had already accomplished so much at their where before they died that they could have just stopped making albums, lived for the rest of their life, and they still... Now, would they be a, a, as revered as they are now? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, yeah. that's a good question. But I think that uh, they would have went down in history as some of the best rappers, no matter no matter yeah, what, regardless. Yeah. I of wonder that. where they would rank. Like, I wonder how Tupac would be today. You know, would he be like? Yeah, a, well, it's kind. Of, I mean, like Jay Z. Would he be like that? Yeah, like super revered. But it's like he's kind of in a part of his career where everybody's like, kind of ah, you know, wait, well, J- waiting J- for something like. Well, Jay Z's just again. a business. I mean, brilliant businessman. Right. Same thing with Dr. Dre and. You know, I wonder if they would go that route. Well, you know? Tupac was that way too. He was already getting into making movies and producing his own movies. I mean, the guy's 24, 25 oh, yeah. years old. He was in Poetic Justice, yeah, right? Yeah, bro. Oh, he was true. So they were they were business he was business savvy himself too. He was about get, making money and 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 that was before like Jay-Z and these guys are now older, wiser, been around the game longer. Like it's it's like what I'm seeing with the NBA players now too. It's like we had to go through that. There was a a window of like maybe 20 years when these, uh, you know, athletes and rap stars are, we could, you could literally come from being, you know, straight out of the ghetto to all of a sudden making millions of dollars within a one, two year. Imagine what an adjustment that is for those kids that were teenagers in the ghetto, then two years later living the high life. Like mm-hmm. enough of those have happened now and have gone to the top That's a challenge. and crashed that I think it's going to be kind a of ch- a playbook there now. Yeah, I think they're yeah. getting, I think mo- most of the kids are getting wiser now. They're and that's coaching not to, them differently. Right. And, that, and it's not to say that there's still a ton of them are not going bankrupt and, and, you know, spending all their money on cars and wheels and shit like that. But there definitely is, uh, I think, a change of for the better that they're getting wiser and investing their money, and you're seeing this more and more in both the NBA. Well, and I think with it's in the best uh, interest of the record labels because a dead artist, you know, isn't going to make you as much as someone who, who can produce and, and live. Well, I mean, in some cases, they really squeeze the shit out of Tupac, didn't they? But uh, he had a lot of he had a lot of content that he made that never aired, so yeah, they no, could he, keep dipping into that. Well, well, that's where a lot of the conspiracies come after, right? Like he's still alive somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> they had like the having, hologram of him touring, having lunch like, with Elvis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. totally right. <laughs> no, Elvis dying on the shitter. Well, oh, would you man. consider that the golden age? Because like in bodybuilding, there's the golden age, right? You have the golden age of movies, and you know, would you consider that to be the golden age of? of rap oh absolutely you think so absolutely it doesn't have the influence like it used to right i mean i mean you know me i'm the first to argue with you about rap is bad or dead today i don't i don't agree with that but i definitely would agree that that was the golden era for sure of of rap like they just they elevated it to a new level when it first came on the scene um it was catchy it was cool it was whatever but uh tupac and biggie really elevated it to a whole nother level especially from a poetic I mean, the stuff that um, Tupac was was singing about and writing about when he talked, he was into politics and stuff. Yeah. Like a 20-something, and he was a very well-read kid. 
So the the stuff that he was he was conveying within his songs, I think, was. And it's not to say the guys before weren't because they were talking about things that were really happening on the streets in real life. And they they brought to the culture something that I think a mm-hmm. lot of the, the U.S. was just naive to. And I think that w- is huge and did did great things for for music. But, yeah, man, that that era, that generation right there was 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 crazy. You know, I, to totally switch subjects. I was uh, I was talking to Ben Pakolsky. Did you see that he started the carnivore diet? Did he really? He just had... Really? Um, so Why? We're, we're going to have to connect with... Uh, uh, is it Paul Saldino or something? Mm. I, I've already... He, he debated... I've heard that name getting thrown around He lot, debated maybe. Lane, and rumor has it. I haven't watched... That he did well. Yeah, I heard that he yeah. won the debate. Really? But yeah, uh, that's what people have been sharing with me. Now, of mm. course, I'm sure the diehard Lane fans disagree or whatever, but I heard that he did a lot better than Sean Baker mm. and... <clears throat> and then who else did Lane? And oh, Lane went with uh, uh, our boy Dom. Mm. They said that this debate was really good, and he's been on a couple shows. Yeah, I and saw he, he was on uh, Ben Greenfield's, and then Greenfield was now all like carnivore. Right. Head. So he he went on Ben Greenfield's. Ben went on a kick like that afterwards. Then he went over to Pukolski's podcast, did Pukolski's, and then Pukolski was on a kick for a while, or he's on a kick right now of doing it. So I've been wanting to touch bases with him, see how it's going. I just don't uh, – it's one of those cases where um, <clears throat> just because you can doesn't mean you should. Like, d- can you survive on just eating meat? Yeah, you can. The human body can survive on just eating meat for a little while. I mean, we evolved that way. Does that make it ideal? No. I don't think so at all. Not at all. Well, I But think- I think there's cases where it might be for some people. Not a lot of people, though. <clears throat> But like you talk about someone like Michaela Peterson or Jordan Peterson who have such severe immune reactions right. to food that it's way better for them to just eat meat and nothing else. They feel way, way better. But for the most people, oh, I, don't, I think it's a terrible idea to just limit. Besides the fact that, okay, look, we can debate whether or not it's healthy or not. And I think it's healthier to eat a variety of foods and, and most of the evidence is on my side. But besides that, the psychological piece I can't think of anything more restrictive than that. You are going to get a bunch of people going carnivore and then rebounding and binging like nuts when they go off of it. Yeah. I mean, I going through it too. Like I, I, and I'm a meat eater. Like I, I, I haven't stopped since, you know, even going the carnivore diet in terms of like including a lot of, uh, you know, like meat on the regular and that being like the focus of my meals. But it's still like, I, I just remember it was, it was so much like it just, I I never got really accustomed to, uh, that volume of meat. It was like, it was like a a lot, a lot of meat you had to eat in order to even build up your calorie base to, uh, match probably like even close to where you're at right now going on it. So that's why people lose weight. That's why they love it. You know, if you really peel it down and and you, you consider people that we've worked with clients, you consider the, how the human psyche is around food. One thing that people really like is simplicity. Like just tell me what to do or tell me what not to eat. And it doesn't get any more simple than Yeah, that's a great diet for that. Yeah. (laughs) Just eat just eat meat. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, sweet. I could do this. Yeah, just eat meat. And and for some people it might even be a relief because of the the information overload you get from everything else. Totally. And the and the confusion and what do I eat and I don't want to count macros and I don't know what's going on. Oh, you mean all I got to do is eat meat? I can do that. Done. I'll right. just I'll just eat meat. As long as they're eating high quality meat, though, I you think got that, to. that's not stressed enough, though. Oh, I, I bet. Think. Yeah, get your grass fed uh, meat. It makes uh, it actually, especially if I know, all you're eating is meat. Butcher Box has got to be loving all these people that are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah they should be running ads like crazy for the carnivore. Diet, I'm sure right? they do. They yeah. probably target the shit out of these people. I mean, I would. Yeah, no, I, I they I don't. Mean, I don't think that they. I don't think they should attach themselves to the carnivore diet, though. That yeah. would be a bad Who, idea. Butcher Box, yeah. They, they aren't not I think to attach literally. No, to but, it. Well, what do you mean by it, to, to like, attach literally? I like mean, if you're going to do the carnivore diet, dude, but they, they're better off like sp- you know sponsoring people who are doing that. But if you attach yourself to such right. an extreme diet, as soon as the backlash comes, which it will, like they all do. Um, then I, have, I don't know. Could it be that bad? Considering that they 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 pretty much only sell meat, so yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not like it's going to shoot them in the foot yeah. ever. I well, don't see how it would be a bad. I mean, thing. it's high quality, high source meat, you know. But for like any <clears throat> diet, though, like that's the thing. Like yeah. you don't want to pigeonhole it. No. But yeah, it's it's definitely will will do best. That's yeah. I lived off that stuff. I got I my good. cousin signed up for Butcher Box this weekend. We were actually talking about uh, you know grass fed beef and organic and this and that. And he says, "What's the most important thing?" I said, "Well." When I talk to people that I trust, like Paul Check, for example, or you know Chris Cresser, 
Um, they say grass fed is the most important thing when you're looking at meat. And so butcher box is good. And so I had them going online and did you know, so first of all, the promotion changed. You guys see what they're doing now? Yeah, I know it's like a, it's called a breakfast something. What's it called? Yeah, it's like a breakfast bundle. Breakfast so bundle. you get two packs of bacon and two pounds of pork breakfast sausage Whoa. with your first order. <laughs> and a then a lot of pork. Yeah. $20, $20 off. So they're, they're hooking it up. But anyway, we're going on. And my cousin's my cousin is a uh, you know he's a he's a finance guy right he does people's uh, yeah he, he does their uh, their account management and wealth and all that stuff and he's a total numbers guy so I see him on his phone you know adding up like how much it costs because what he wants to do is he wants to go buy a cow and freeze it or he wants to go to yeah I mean uh, Courtney did Costco that. and all that right stuff. I don't think you can beat that so can you? well he's doing the math and he's like. They're not bad. Is it comparable? Yeah, and he goes, it's not bad. He goes, well, when you buy a cow, you got to go in out with people. You got to go to the butcher, pay the butcher to, to- Right, you need at least two to three families. Yeah, and then the butcher cuts it for you and vacuum seals it, and then you yeah. have to have a big freezer. And I'm like, dude, they ship this. They'll send you a box to your door once a, once a month or once every other month. You pick what you want. Here's the cost. He's doing the math, and he's like, this is not bad. Or this is really good. And I said, yeah, and it's fucking quality, dude. And you can change up the variety. That was the one thing about when we went in. It's like we were, we were stuck with only certain cuts, and it was like it got like oh tiresome when you had just the same cuts all the sure. time. Sure. So yeah, butcher box. You can kind of go in and like alternate like what you. That's want. That's crazy exactly. that it's even competitive with that at all. Because I would yeah. think that it doesn't get a better deal than to go straight to a cow. Well, like I said, you got to count. You got to right. get. To, you got to go in with a family. No, you got to hire a butcher <laughs> who's going to cut. Tell them what they want. Cut it for you. Vacuum seal it. Then you freeze it. When you add that, that, all that up versus. It gets delivered to my door. It's already sourced, you know, high quality. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't beat that. Well, my favorite part, too, is how they do the different cadences because we've manipulated that many times now. Like, so when we first started off, I think we were getting it every single month. And then I realized, like, oh, we were, mm -hmm. we probably like didn't need it. Every other month. Every other month. You can go every three. So, you know, I have, like, I have clients, too, that, you know, they're by themselves. I have single, like, someone who's a single or by themselves. And they're like, I, I don't know if I want to do something that's coming every single month. They're like, no, you can do it every three months. Uh, Get your meat and last you over the next three months. I think that's just as so. It's cool how you can change that. I yeah. think. So, yeah. have you guys noticed any difference? To have you guys done experiments? Well, you'll eat like a lot of, tr you know, traditional grain-fed beef versus a lot of grass-fed, just to see how you feel different. I can't. I can't really tell because when I when I make the decision not to eat grass-fed, I'm also I'm also doing something bad too, like having. The cheese and the burger. It's like a burger. Oh, right? I see what you're saying. It's, you know what I'm saying? So you haven't like, isolated it. Exactly. I haven't isolated enough to like be able to say, like, wow, I notice a big difference when I eat grass fed. You can taste the, I can taste the difference for sure. Well, grain fed has got more fat and yeah. it tends to have that tasty. That's you know. the, the hardest sales pitch, I think, for people on to get people to go grass fed is that understanding that. You know the the fattier shit that they're they're pumped full of grain is going to give it's going to have more flavor to mm -hmm. it for sure. Well, the butcher box is the best grass fed. That hundred hundred percent. That, 100%, that yeah, was what yeah. made me fall in love with them when we first we first signed up with them. I was like, oh man, this is the best grass fed yeah. beef I've ever. So had. So I've done it to where we'll go to Costco and we'll get their meat, and it's not bad quality, but it's grain it's grain fed, and I'll eat large quantities of it, and I just feel more. And this is my own this is my own experience, my anecdote. Okay, I just feel. Like my digestion isn't as good, and I get kind of lethargic. In comparison, like when I eat a big grass-fed steak, when I eat the like the ribeyes from Butcher Box, I don't feel this just quite as like oh, like I just ate a you know what I mean? Yeah, when, I like give a break love, in your stomach. I used to love those Morton like tri tips we used to get, and yeah. it was the same thing. It was like I would get yeah a little bit like sluggish or or like mm -hmm. you know it might actually activate a little bit of my heartburn a mm -hmm. little bit because whatever else they threw in there like i don't I'm, i wasn't like too sure but yeah butcher box pretty consistently good you know feel good energy from yeah, it yeah. so adam did did you say you were doing some moving or something this weekend oh or? yeah no we get getting ready for maximus man oh uh, yeah. yeah trying to be like super proactive like way ahead of time so we're not scrambling for the last couple months before he gets here and the big thing that we needed to do was to clean out his his room, which is mm -hmm. turned into the shoe room. So yeah, so, so you, wow. So you, 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 <laughs> is Katrina like painting now and like getting it all? Kind yeah. Of so we we've got um her her brother's coming in in the next. So she has everything picked out, like the theme of it and the colors. What's and the theme? It's like bears. It's like a bear theme. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right yeah. Right so on. it's like a. My, I, I was, I have totally been hands off. I've been, you tell me, she's showed me like, she's like, do you like this better or this better? And I've had like a little bit of say, but to be honest, it's been kind of all her and her, her mom and her sister are all into it. So I think she's 
enjoying the shit out of it, but we're painting painting the room and, and redoing the closet st- set up and he's oh, everything's going to be all new. And so I had to get everything cleared out and my shoes my shoes were the biggest was the biggest pain in the ass. <laughs> you're, you're, it took you having a kid to have to move to yeah, move your shoes. Yeah, man. Oh, dude, that was like. So, what do you put all your shoes? You so, have like the hundreds of boxes of. Well, shoes. so I w- the first I w- had to go underneath. So when we moved in, uh, anything that and this has probably happened. I, I'm sure people can relate to this. When you move in, it's like you get all the, like the the main stuff the that you, you use on a regular basis, or you sit on, or your couches, your tables, all that shit like that, and then it's like all these other boxes and shit gets like in a garage or an attic or wherever your storage is. So we have at this house, we have uh, the underneath is like this big storage place, but you, it's only about, I don't know, I'd say three and a half feet high. So I can crawl under there and thank God I have good mobility now. So I could sit in a squatted, deep squatted position and, and get under there. And and so I organized all of it as of right now. It was just, shit was just thrown all in there. So I spent like, <clears throat> which is also why I'm all, my throat's all flimmy because I took in all kinds of dust this weekend uh, being underneath there. And I organized everything from like the Christmas stuff, the camping stuff, like, you know, all old stuff from Katrina's past, my old stuff from my past, the snowboard. And the, your shoes. Yeah, and then shoes now have taken up all kinds of... So what if you want to go and grab a pair? Are well, so I, gonna... I've, I've, now, I've broken up in sections. So I have my master bedroom. My bed is also a shoe thing. You've seen it before, right? Yeah. You can put all... So I can fit about 10 pairs of shoes on around my bed. And then I have my master bedroom closet where I have another about 10 pairs of shoes. And then I have another spare room besides Maximus' room, a closet that I've stacked probably 100 in there. So the whole closet is nothing but shoes. Uh, and then the last bit of them all went down in the garage. So And I, I took the ones that I rarely ever wear that I stored them away. It's like, okay. And eventually I want to go through them and sell them or get rid of them or whatever I thought. But I said, okay, what I, I want. Your son one day is going to be like, so dad, uh, did you get like, did you save up money for my college and stuff? You're like, no, but I did something better. <laughs> yeah. Come downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all these shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Pick one. Yeah. So yeah. I spent, I spent all, I spent Cures. my, my whole, my whole uh, Saturday pretty much cleaning that all up and getting it all ready, but it's good now. And I've turned downstairs where my the rower is at so i've got some some shoes out there too so there's some shoes stacked out there oh my god yeah there's a lot of shoes there. have you ever just tried to do the math to see how much money in shoes you have there oh if i had to guess like in their current value if you were to sell them all right right um you figure there's a there's a few hundred so there's probably there's somewhere between probably three and five hundred i don't know there's Jeez. there's probably less than 500 there's definitely more than than two or th- no, there's definitely more than 300. Actually, it's probably closer to 500. There's probably about 500 pairs of shoes what's, out of the. What's the cheapest and the most expensive? Then we can get like kind of. An there you average. go. So the the cheapest pair. There's probably a pair of 50 dollars shoes in there somewhere, but yeah. there, it's the most common price range is probably about 100 150 for like my normal sh- sneakers. Yeah. Uh, Bro, you got like 50 60 G's of shoes. I don't know. I didn't have done the math. Like the there's the most expensive pair. I mean, I have a couple pairs that are, are worth a lot. Like the most expensive is thirty five hundred. So there's a thirty five hundred dollar pair, and then you figure there's. Did I do the math wrong? We'll do it. You probably do an average of like one hundred and fifty dollars, right? That's probably a good average considering that there's. It's probably higher. Oh, than you got seventy five thousand dollars worth of shoes. Really? Is it that much? Yeah, it is, bro. <laughs> wow, it's, it is college. It's impressive, <laughs> bro. That's what I'm. That's why I made that joke. <laughs> totally. Holy shit, bro. Uh, yeah, I never, uh, I never did the math really on. Wow. Open your. How much store, you, did dude. you spend on them? Do you think each of them about fifty to hundred bucks? Well, nothing is fifty bucks. I mean, there's Justin asked the cheapest. There's probably a pair of Chucks in there that are. I'm, right. I'm, I'm uh, guessing. Like so you have. Right? So that's it's safe, rare, it's so safe, it's safe it's to say that you've spent. 50 to 70 G's on all those Well, I, not necessarily because a lot have been gifts. A lot of people know that I collect mm. sneakers. Oh, okay. I'm into shoes. So, I mean, I've got quite a, Katrina's bought quite a few really <laughs> nice pairs for me and I've had clients give me nice pairs. So, so you know, out of those 500, how many would you say you bought? Oh, 90%. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah, you've absolutely. got like $50,000 that you spent on maybe, all those. Does that hurt, bro? A little bit when you say that? Maybe, a little, say that? maybe a little bit when you say <laughs> it like that. You know, maybe a little, maybe a like, little bit. Ah! <laughs> 
I would have never done that though if they, if if shoes weren't where they're at now. When we were kids, they weren't like this. Yeah. But you know, it's they've turned in. There's a stock market for them. So uh, you, bro, you if you sell them and you make a profit, I'm gonna be yeah, eating my yeah, words. Exactly. I would I would make a You're laughing at you because I, I wear all of mine and I'm not like that about. I'm not trying to. I don't treat them like I wear them. I wear them so I wouldn't get nowhere near. I would get half the price at best. Like those thirty five hundred dollar ones, I've worn them a bunch of times right in Vegas. So I would probably get fifteen hundred dollars for them. So, but I still, I mean, I could wear them as long as I did. And then when I'm over it, I could probably sell them. And like I will, I'll get rid of a bunch that I don't really wear anymore and make some money back, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Never thought of it that much. I can't believe it's Start giving them to your kid, bro, for his yeah, birthday. Yeah, <laughs> He's exactly. He doesn't know. They're under the house. you will never know. <laughs> it's a long Happy birthday, one son. One. She's like, oh my God, this is worth a lot of money. Well, I the scariest. They fit, Dad. <laughs> the scariest part about it, uh, I should say, that I have to make a decision sooner than later is they. Uh, what, they oxidate, so the oxidize oxidize, yeah. so they um, the rubber will start to fall apart. Uh, so that you can't just keep sneakers forever. You got to put them in a like vacuum gotta, seal. Yeah, them I was going to say vacuum seal them. Maybe. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess you could vacuum seal them. That would be a real pain in the ass. Yeah, then everyone. they might smash them. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So I they're Shrink. they're in plastic sealed boxes, but even then, those I'm sure. If I go back and look at some of my oldest, dude, that's pair. a lot of money in shoes. Did you insure them? <laughs> no, they're not insured. You probably want to. That's yeah. a that's a decent amount of money in shoes, man. Yeah, that's that's. I think I'd probably grab all the major. I keep the really expensive ones close to me. Okay. Yeah. So the, yeah, the, <laughs> there's an the, alarm on them. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the really close ones are cl- are close to my bed, so I I probably grab those real quick. Bro, how funny! Know? What a what a great prank that would be if we if Justin and I came over one day oh without you knowing God. and took just your expensive ass shoes, put them on, came to work. <laughs> What the fuck? Do you know what would happen to him? <laughs> He's I don't want to be anywhere near yeah. him yeah. if that happened. Yeah, yeah if you destroyed some of my stuff. No, I, I would that never would do that. Really yeah. that would, but that be, would be a dirty prank is if you did the same thing to my sneakers as I did to my buddy's DVDs. where you Mix went, them all up? Yeah, oh. ma- mix and match every pair. Oh, now you gave so no, idea. I couldn't open a box yeah. of the same pair being there. That yeah, like would be, Air Jordan and a freaking right. yeah, pair of Or we yeah, replace them with some JCPenney shoes. Pay less shoe source going out of business. 50% off right now. Did you guys know this? We did not. Know that we yeah, weren't paying attention. Oh, yeah, get your yeah. that's kids, dude. Take yeah. your kids and get the because uh, kids grow out of fucking shoes. No, I bought my son a pair of shoes. Bro, trust me, bro. I bought him a pair of shoes two months later. Fucking don't fit him anymore. I bought a him a couple three, weeks sometimes. I bought I him three pairs of jeans. Yeah. Waste of money. I told yeah. my kid, I said, from now on, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna treat your clothes the way I buy fruit. And he goes, What do you dude. mean? I go, I buy fruit the day I'm gonna eat it because it goes bad. So you want a pair of clothes? Yeah. <laughs> we'll buy it that day, and that's it. Well, kids, a lot kids having cool clothes is that's you know that's great, but not for very long. Uh, no. You know, a lot of people assume that I'm gonna like uh, spoil him with sneakers and do. And of course, I did a post with. No, the, you the, can't spoil him. You, you've already spent all your money on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I, you buy me a present? Yeah, he's gonna yeah. do things. Like I, that. I I actually don't. I I won't. I've I told Katrina too. Like I've been really. She was. She's getting so excited about getting the room ready and all the stuff and like shopping for things i'm like whoa 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 i'm like you have a massive family i have a big family we have a ton of people close to us that are trying to buy things You're for us get so much shit bro i'm like don't buy anything i put it on and she's already got the 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 what do you call it yeah the, so showers are for yeah what's the baby list thing or whatever like that like a wedding you know the fucking yeah, uh, yeah, registry registry, yeah, registry yeah. yeah she's already registered already and i'm like just put everything that you could possibly want him on that, and then just let people buy it. I know what to buy you, bro. And I am not. I to get you. I'm not going to spoil. I'm. I'm really not going to spoil the shit out of him because I. He'll be spoiled by everybody else. Yeah. Well, uh, bro, here, you just wait. Here's the thing: like when meeting people like um, Joe Decina. I mean, being at where I'm. If I would have, if I would have had my kid in my early twenties, I would have. I would have made this mistake. I would have allowed my insecurities of not having things, wanting things so bad that it would have bled into my son. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it spoils him. Right, where I've come ruins him. I've yeah. come full circle on the having the childhood I had. I'm grateful for it, and I know that it it, it forged me into the person that I am today. Therefore, I know better than to just get things for my son because I can afford to do it and yeah. I won't do that. Yeah. And Dude, so, Warren Buffett doesn't give his kids shit. Right, I'm more likely to be the asshole dad where my son's just like, fucking my dad has all this money, won't give me shit. Like, I, I, I plan to be more like that and teach him how to- He has to earn it. Yeah, dude. earn it. He has versus to earn it. Otherwise, what giving you, it to him. you're going to raise a, yeah, a, sure. a rich, spoiled, shitty ass, entitled kid. That, and that's what I see. Almost everybody, the, and the ones that turned out well, like I think- uh, uh, you know, Mike Matthews' is an example, so it turned out well. I had an ex that came from a very wealthy family. She turned out well. And all the ones that I know that turned out really well, their parents 
put instilled values like this early on and just didn't give them everything they wanted. That's they right. didn't have some badass whip in high school. They weren't dr- wearing all this expensive ass clothes. Bro, like, you just wait till you're to Christmas. Okay, having going having Christmas with kids, you go home and your car's filled with yeah. shit. You have and to you actually co- go get rid of toys to get bring the new toys it's, in. It's insane, dude. And this is your this and this baby's the new baby in both your family. Yeah. You just you're gonna go Christmas. You're gonna go home. And That's why I don't like, want her to buy anything. Yeah. I'm like, don't buy like, anything. Giving away We're all gonna have to throw away time. more stuff than anything else. I'm like, oh. we don't need to buy. Kids anything. are great. Just let them run around naked. Put newspaper on the floor. You're set. You know <laughs> <what> I mean, <laughs> I, I want to rocks and sticks, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm serious. I want to be like that. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Clydesburg. What are the pros and cons of training with a weighted vest? Oh, the good old weighted vest. You know, um, it's, a, yeah. good, it's a good question, though. We uh, Definitely, because people are, uh, I constantly see people posting pictures with them on and talking about using them yeah. in their training. So I like, yeah, I like using them more for body weight exercise, not for running. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you're going to do weighted movements like pull ups, dips, push ups, you know, body rows, that kind of stuff. A weighted vest is very convenient. It's it sticks to your body. I mean, you could always hang a, a weight off of one of those weight belts or whatever, but that that weight swings and it makes it less, um, just less convenient. So weighted vests for that are pretty awesome. As far as doing a bunch of activities and exercises in a weighted vest, like running or box jumps or sprints, not a good idea. No, no. not unless you're training specifically for something in which you're going to be carrying lots of weight and doing those activities like military. Right. Like if you're a if you're a, um, a, in, going to be training to run with a pack on, makes uh-huh. sense. Yeah, then yeah, it ruck, makes sense. But then even then they have like ruck packs or things like that where you could add weight to it and it's more like it, it translates better. Yeah. No, if you're an average person you're like, "Oh, I want to run, but I want to add a weight vest on to make it harder." Unless it, if your form is not perfect, if you don't have perfect biomechanics, nobody has perfect. Boy, form. exactly. Yeah. You are going to set yourself up for some for some problems. And you haven't acclimated to that added amount of load and stress to the joints. So really, we're just like uh, to to immediately throw that kind of excess weight to uh, like a running situation on on like mechanics that are already somewhat. I'm going to guarantee they're somewhat flawed. Uh, it's really going to expose a lot of those weak links. Yeah, I know more people who've hurt. Um, ankles and knees from weighted vests than than I, I I wish I did. There's just tons because people will put them on. They'll do like the box jumps and stuff. Yeah, and you need to have good understanding of mechanics. Natural. So here's the thing: when we say good mechanics, I'm not referring to you knowing how to run properly. I'm talking about how do you run when you're not thinking about it. That's what good mechanics are because that becomes your default. And when you add weight to your body and fatigue, things start to break down. And it's just a recipe for disaster. There's a risk versus benefit uh, you know, analysis you have to make. Right. And again, unless you're training for an event where you actually have to carry weight, so you have to actually get good. Like if you're a hiker, so I've done this with clients where I've had clients who do like hardcore hiking where they'll go way out in the wilderness and they'll carry 40, 50 pound you know, backpacks on their back and they want to prepare for that. And part of their preparation was hiking with a weight vest on. Um, and then what I would do is I'd progress them to actually hiking with their pack on because you'd want to be as close to yeah, what you're going to do as To normal. me, that, there's yeah. no sense in even doing a vest. I would just load my bag up. Mm-hmm. If you're a hiker and you're getting ready to do a – and your backpack is normally 50 pounds worth of gear in the back, well, the best thing you can do is actually load your backpack up with all the real gear you'd be carrying and then go out on these hikes mm-hmm. that you would do. I mean, nothing's going to train you for that better than that. Yeah. There's If you're not if, – if it's not specific, like if you do not have something that you would have to run with something and you're not training for that, for the average person who's just trying to get stronger, faster, bigger, uh, not a good idea. No. Just, there's no – there's not enough carryover and not enough benefit for the potential risk of, of running with something and like that. And here comes the question where people will be like, well, if I got better with running with a weighted vest on, wouldn't that make me that much better – running without a weighted vest? And the answer to that is also no, and here's why, okay? And I'll use a different analogy or a different example. Years ago, I trained a boxer, um, and for a short while, he gave me boxing lessons, and we did a trade. So I would do personal training, 
and he would teach me, you know, combinations and I'd hit the mitts and stuff like that. And I asked him, I said, Hey, is it a good idea? Should I shadow box and hold one pound or two pound dumbbells in my hands? Cause I thought, Oh, you know, added resistance to make me better. And he goes, fuck no. Right. He goes, you're just going to be throwing off your timing. He says, because you get used to, to punching with a particular speed and cadence with weight. When you take them off, your timing is going to be all off. Same is true for running with the weighted vest. If you run with the weighted vest, you'll get and you get good at running with the weighted vest. You take it off, and you might feel lighter, but your cadence and your rhythm and your technique has now been honed with to running with this weighted vest on, and not to running with you know a lighter body weight. And it actually throws things off, so it doesn't improve that as well. Now here's where I'll say the good stuff comes from a weighted vest. If you like doing body weight exercises and you want to get the muscle building effects mm -hmm. of weights, because weights build muscle really well because of the heavy resistance, the one knock I have against body weight exercises, a lot of times it's difficult to get adequate resistance to really build lots of muscle. You have to get real creative. Right. Put on a weighted vest. Get on some rings. Get on some dip bars. Do pull-ups, push-ups. Yeah. Now you're getting that those closed chain body weight movements, but you're getting the muscle building effects of the high resistance. Well, and now too they have products out that are really like form fitted. Like they've done a really good job of being able to you know distribute the weight around your body, so it it, it fit like anatomically it it, it kind of makes more sense. So well, they also make them too to where you can scale them, right? So yeah. some of them are like twenty pounds, wow. then you go to forty pounds, then sixty pounds, which that's cool too. Start off with twenty pounds and then doing that for a few weeks, progress yourself up to 40 and keep working mm -hmm. up with that. I think it'd be great. No, I, I used to have a weighted vest that went up to 50 pounds and you could actually had pockets yeah, where you could too. put, uh, like you could put like weighted. But it was still floppy. Like they have ones That was now. the thing. Yeah, like especially when you do push-ups, it'd be like, like Yeah, like floppy it touches the floor the before you get. Lame, but. Exactly. Yeah, so now I think it's like high fleet uh, or whatever. The, the, I'm probably pronouncing mm -hmm. it wrong, but they have a great uh, form-fitted vest. But I loved doing pull-ups uh, and dips and body rows uh, with uh, the weighted vest. It would yeah. be a great thing to put into maps anywhere. I mean, I think it would complement. Oh, I have the fuck, yeah. Yeah, no, that would be actually That would really intensify cool. it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And also for someone working out at home, if you're working out at home and you're doing, especially because here's the big challenge with body weight exercises or the leg exercises. How do I get adequate resistance to build muscle my legs? You have to start to do like the single, you know, single limb exercises, pistol squats and stuff like that. But if you're not at that level yet, but you still want to add resistance, weighted vest is a great thing to use at home. You just put it on. Now you got 50 more pounds. Do some walking lunges, and you'll get more of that muscle building benefit. Right. Next question is from Cam the Lamb. What are your opinions on power building? Do you think it's beneficial to mix powerlifting with bodybuilding? You know, oh. I didn't know this was a thing until uh, someone asked me this in my DMs the other day, and I'm like, power building? I had to like look it up. Like, Dude, it's old, bro. Power building is an old word that they were throwing around in the mm. 80s and 90s with uh, bodybuilders who like to lift – heavy, heavy weight with loose form. Huh. Um, and uh, it, it became like a thing for a second and then it went away. And I think they're just bringing it back. And it's basically heavy ass bodybuilding, right? It's like bodybuilding, but with like, like uh, what's his name? Oh, shit, what's his name? He won the Arnold Classic a while ago. Uh, dude from Texas, crazy looking quads. You know who I'm talking about if I say his name. Uh, Flex? Just, no, Ooh. not Flex. He stopped competing. Oh, uh, not that not that long ago. But he was big uh, for a second there. Oh, Branch. Branch Warren. Oh, okay. So Branch Warren, you know, kind of trains like that. Form is a little looser, super heavy. Um, Johnny Jackson trained that way for a while. So um, are they are they are they blending it in one workout to where it's like both? That's what they're doing. They're not doing. They're not going. They're not phasing, you know what I'm saying? They're not going like this is well. So are they doing uh, like deadlifts and like like you know power lifting type lifts within the bodybuilding or what is that? Uh... Somewhat, but really what they're doing is the ones I've seen. Okay, is they're just taking bodybuilding movements and just fucking training heavy. Uh. So they're doing curls and they're curling like hundred pound dumbbells and the form is loose. Or they're doing like a little bit of like cheat. Uh, involved in yes, that. Yes, and they're just saying power building because the form isn't as clean. Uh -huh. The well, reps tend to be a little short and they're using tons and I'm, tons of weight. I'm assuming the person who's asking this question probably doesn't own any of our programs because we have like a, every program has got like a, you know, uh, you know power lifting type of protocol in one of the phases. Yeah. And then there's always a phase that's kind of like a bodybuilding type of protocol. All that is is you know your rep range, the exercises that we're choosing and we're talking about, and that's what really differentiates these 
these two things, which is why the whole power building thing, I was like, huh, what is that? Now, know. that's the key here. Some Something you want to keep in mind. First of all, training heavy in the low rep range, like a power lifter, has got great carryover to bodybuilding or muscle building. It gives your muscles a quality of look. It gives you, it does build more muscle, especially if you never train in that in those rep ranges. So there's lots of value, but there's also more risks. Training heavy, your joints are going to hurt more. The yeah. risk of tearing a muscle is much higher. And here's the other thing. Not all exercises lend themselves well to this kind of training. If you're going to train in the low rep ranges, stick to the compound barbell and dumbbell type movements. Don't do this don't do this powerlifting type, you know, phase of training and do a bunch of cable and isolation exercises, which is what I see a lot of these bodybuilders doing. They're like, "Oh, I'm I'm power building." And they're doing tricep kickbacks, bar, you know, dumbbell curls. They're doing side laterals and rather than doing good form, they're swinging the weight, but they're calling it power building because they're, you know, 80-pound dumbbells. I don't think that's a a great way to apply heavy training. I also think it's you're better off phasing so doing like like we design our programs, you know, do three to four weeks of powerlifting type training, then go into your bodybuilding and also pick the right exercises. There, it's not a good idea to do all the exercises with low reps; they just don't work great. Right. Like like laterals, you know what you know what ends up happening with laterals when you do hella heavy ass weight. Yeah, you're just doing traps and other shit. Yeah, you're doing like a uh, like a snatch grip clean almost, you know, with, with kind oh, of the yeah. weight you're you know, which is fine if you want to work your upper back, but you're you're negating you know th- like rear laterals. That's another rear flies like yeah. for for rear delts or curls you know i've seen some of these videos and then look at these bodybuilders who train this way N- name one of them that hasn't had major injuries you mm-hmm. can't mm-hmm. you know there's a reason why dexter jackson is still competing and you know god bless him ronnie coleman has just got a lot of problems dorian yates tore lots of muscles also yeah. that style of training um if you're not smart about it you, your risk of injury goes you know through the roof um now on the flip side do do power lifters get a benefit from training in the hypertrophy bodybuilding range oh, yeah. absolutely of definitely um it gives their joints a break gives them a little bit more hypertrophy to work with with their with their muscles um and then they can focus on some of the smaller muscle groups that support mm. um you know some of those heavier lifts but if you're going to in in, in my opinion if you're going to combine power lifting or heavy low rep training with bodybuilding my opinion is don't just throw them all together at once Stick to one for a phase. It's the same mindset. I know what I'm training for, perfecting my form for these lifts. These are the lifts that are really good for this type of phase of training. Then move to bodybuilding. These are the lifts that work great with for that. Here's the mindset. When you mix them together, what ends up happening is you end up getting you end up amplifying the negatives of both and minimizing the the benefits of both. And so it's just not as good in my opinion. Next question is from Stephen Bush. Which diet trend do you think has had the most adverse effect on our society? Ooh, that's a cool question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like this, this one. Gonna, I, this is going to trigger some people probably. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I was trying to think about this question and think about, like, we've covered pretty much every diet that's out there for the most part. Uh, I just remember the misinformation that, that was biggest for me growing up was the low fat. Yeah. And like how everybody like was condemning fat uh, in their diet. And where were we going instead? Processed carbs and, you know, cereals and everything else was like fair game. And so. Well, I, I'm going to piss a bunch of people off and say vegetarian. I, I think I think that there's more people that have tried the the vegetarian diet thinking that it's a healthier, better way to live and end up missing a ton of things that their body needs. They're because, pushing it right now too mm-hmm. real hard. Right. And I think, and that's not to say, okay, because all the diets I could talk about, that it's not to say that it can't be done and it can't be extremely healthy and that there's somebody who's listening right now that's like shaking their head, no way, I switched to vegan and I had all kinds of great responses. Okay, so I'm not saying that. I'm saying at it, if we're talking about in general – which one do I think it's probably turned people the wrong direction? Hmm. I think that it has probably got a bunch of people that have gone this direction that, so their whole idea is, okay, now I'm just avoiding meat altogether, and so I'm following this diet. Instead of putting the time into thinking like, am I hitting all my macro and micronutrient targets that I need for longevity? And I think a lot of people miss that. Well, especially looking at the backlash people get when they 
you know, leave that type of, of uh, diet uh, from, from that community. And it's like, they had to for their health. Yeah. Like, like, why are you condemning somebody it's, for like going to the doctor and being like, you have to have like, you know, meat based, uh, protein, like, you know, or you're, nutrients you're or some, nutrients. some, you know, nutrients you're deficient in. Yeah. It's the only, um, widespread diet type that is uh, fueled by ethical and moral reasons. Like there's no other diet that is surrounded by these ethical reasons. Like which people don't it, go, which makes it dangerous, I which think. makes it dangerous. Yeah. Right. Because, no, I'll agree with that. yeah, because keto, paleo, low fat, you know, high protein bodybuilder diets where there isn't an ethical uh, fuel yeah. th- behind it. Yep. When people go vegan, Oftentimes, or at least the ones that that go vegan for a long time, the studies will show this. Because people who go vegan for health typically go back to eating meat. People who go vegan for ethical reasons are very dogged and determined, um, and staying that way because they're not eating vegan because they think it's healthier. They're going vegan because they don't want animals to be killed, and so that really drives them hard. And many of them consider killing animals to be analogous to killing a human. And so it's that moral drive that's pushing them, which causes oftentimes many of them to ignore some of the negatives that come from a vegan diet that is not well-planned. Because in order to eat vegan and be healthy, you have to know what the hell you're doing. You have to be well-planned. Period. End of story. You you will not get away with just not eating meat because – you have to eat a wide variety of vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds. You have to know what to combine with what. You have to know what to supplement with because there's certain nutrients that are very difficult to get from non-animal sources. So you're going to have to supplement with sometimes certain B vitamins, certain minerals, iron uh, for, for some people, especially for some, for some women. You're going to have to supplement oftentimes with creatine. Studies should c- consistently show that when vegans take creatine, their IQ goes up, whereas the average person takes creatine. That doesn't necessarily happen. Now, why? Well, creatine is you only get from animal sources. Creatine fuels, uh, or at least it's turned into certain types of you know, fun, you know foundational fuel for the cells. So if your IQ goes up because you're not eating creatine, it's not because creatine is a nootropic necessarily. It's because you're lacking something uh, that you need. So be very smart and be very planned. Unfortunately, most vegans are not that way. They go into it. And they're like, oh my God, I feel terrible about the way animals are treated. Um, I don't want animals to die. So I'm going to do this for moral reasons. And they go into it not knowing what's going on. And then what ends up happening is after a year or two, they're suffering from you know weak, brittle nails. Hair starts to kind of fall out or thin. Energy levels decline. Cognition starts to decline. Gut issues start to happen. People develop things like SIBO. Um, as a result, and um, and really the 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 ones that are disagreeing with you right now that have these oh man I was the opposite inflammation went down my I didn't feel bloated all the time I felt my energy levels were sure. great a lot of those people were just grossly lacking the vegetables all the leafy greens and all the benefits of eating all these foods that I think are great there's a lot of great things about. The vegan diet I think in in terms of making sure you're getting enough vegetables and things like that into your diet. And normally the positive benefits that someone feels is getting rid of all the processed garbage shit they were eating before. Now all of a sudden they're eating all these whole whole type foods and nuts and seeds and leafy greens. And like, man, those things are good. They should be in your diet anyways. Yeah. And instead of being so religious about it, you know, have some fish in there every once in a while or have some chicken in there every once in a while. Or, or just learn what you need to supplement with in order to make your vegan lifestyle. Because at the end of the day, here's the bottom line, as empathetic as you may be towards animals – which I can com- I completely empathize with. I think if that's your driving force, that's great. You're an empathetic, caring person. But the number one animal you need to be empathetic towards is yourself. So if you're a vegan and you're starting to feel these symptoms and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Go get some testing. Get your nutrients, your vitamins uh, tested. Um, you know, and and see what you need to supplement with or what you need to do with your diet in order to take care of the most important animal. Uh, which is yourself, and that's that's why I chose this diet. I chose that that because I, of all the diets that are out there, and I've done all of them. I've done all of them personally, and I've had plenty of clients that have done all of them. It's the the most challenging one for people to follow and get everything that their body needs. Yeah. You follow a paleo diet, pretty if you follow it pretty well, it's not really hard to get what your your body needs. You follow something like IIFYM. 
pretty easy to get what your body needs. For the most part, most of these diets that are out there, it's it's a lot. And even the carnivore diet, which I think I'm not a fan of restricting everything. Just you're less to me. likely to have a nutrient deficiency. Right, you're less likely you're less likely to have a nutrient deficiency than you are if you're a vegan. And that's just because it's fucking black and white. You just eat meat. You know what I mean? There's <laughs> yeah. no. They don't have to combine meats. Well, those and, are two completely like opposing forces that yeah. would like battle those well, ideas. Right. But but let's be honest. I mean, there's so many there's so many more nutrients found in mm-hmm. meat than anything else. Well, I, so I'll say this uh, because I, I I agree with you in some parts of this, but I'm going to give you a diet that I think has done the most damage to uh our society by far and i don't it's not necessarily a diet that people choose to go on like oh i'm gonna start paleo i'm gonna start but it is a diet that we've been following now for a few decades and that's the the modern western diet the modern western diet is for all intents and purposes fucking terrible um in in many 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 aspects you know i'll give you an example okay if you go back 30 years and you look at the obesity and diabetes and chronic illness rate in Mexico, it was far lower than it was today. Now, granted, uh, lots of Mexicans now have much more access to food today than they did back then, but their diet drastically changed. If you go, if you 30 years ago, you didn't have soda at every single meal in Mexico. Now you do have soda at every single meal. Their candy consumption has gone through the roof. Their consumption of processed foods has gone through the roof. To the point now where Mexico now is the most the most obese country in the world. It's actually surpassed America. Of course, we know about America's problems. We've we, we've got these you know the modern Western diet. The reason why it's so terrible is because what they focused so heavily on was can right, we produce flavor. It, well can we produce enough high energy food to feed people? So let's f- solve that problem. So they did. They took a few crops that they knew that they could mass produce: wheat, soy, corn you know, those types of crops, planted the fuck out of them. And then they said, can we produce enough food that has a long shelf life? And then, of course, it's a market-based economy. So people are like, I'm going to buy what I like. So it tastes good. So they're making food that tastes good. And so the modern Western diet is a diet that is comprised of highly palatable, energy-dense, nutrient-lacking foods. And so we have this fucking epidemic of over-calories, under-nutrients, obese, sick that's not, uh, that's, people. Not, that's not fair you picked that one. Oh, yeah, no. That's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair because the studies have already shown that uh, you'll have better health following any diet pretty mu- yeah, compared pretty much. to the food pyramid or the Western. Yeah. <laughs> so that is – Yeah, I didn't know you were, the food pyramid. Yeah, yeah, that's not fair. Carbs were like, all oh, fair game. You know, right. It was the majority of what everybody's eating. And let's be honest. None of those people are really paying attention. They're just doing uh, – They're yeah. just doing So whatever. we're all right. 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 Well, and, and I think a big problem is the focusing on the, the what and the information rather than focusing on the behaviors that drive – the what, uh, you know, because we've been told now for a while, eat less calories, these foods are good, these foods are bad, rather than teaching people how to change their behaviors, how to how to have a relationship to food, what does it mean, what does hunger really feel like, why am I eating this way, I think that's the approach that we need to yeah, have. The f- Any government-sponsored diet. The I'm funny part is I feel like from. I feel like I could, I can bash every diet and I could praise every diet. For something, yeah. Right, for something. So, and I think the the part that is the worst. But what's caused the most problems in society? Right, it's yeah. got to be the Western was, diet. Well, yeah, it has to be. The, the yeah, all. right. But I don't really feel like it's a diet, right? That's mm-hmm. like that's not something people go on. People that's don't know. Yeah. Like people don't always say, you know what? We're gonna. It's a new year, new me. Yeah. We're gonna follow the Western diet, dude. <laughs> you would be surprised. You know, in Whoa. China and in Japan, they purposely were trying to feed their kids Western foods because they thought that would make their kids tall, like. Uh, like Americans and make them. So McDonald's would open up in those countries and they fucking parents would line up to feed their kids French fries and shit like that. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, true, that's, that's a true story because they thought that's what, I mean, the reason yeah. why they got taller was because they were lacking nutrients yeah. and so that actually did happen. But they said, "Oh, you got to eat like the Americans. They're so tall." For all for all my my vegan people that I probably pissed off now and hate me, I actually think that if you followed a vegan type of diet, but you weren't so dogmatic about it that you allowed to intermittently have fish, steak, and chicken in it, would probably be a pretty damn good fucking diet. Sure, because I think plant based. Oh, yes, yeah. I really this think this would never happen. I just think for the most part, we neglect the the seeds, the nuts, and the leafy greens as as a whole as a society. I think that we don't eat enough fruits and vegetables, seeds and nuts, and some mm-hmm. of these great nutrient dense type foods. And I think what ends up happening is you 
go so extreme that way. You feel all the benefits of, wow, what happens when you eat all those foods? But then you neglect to take in what all the benefits you get for some of the meat. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why don't you follow like a vegan-ish type of diet where you're mostly doing that? But then, hey, recognize when you probably haven't had enough protein in your day and say, hey, I'm going to have six ounces of some salmon. I think what we're going to find in the future is I think we're going to find that the best diet is more seasonal. I think just following the way that humans evolved where there were times where we had all all we had was meat and fat and proteins. And then there were times when we came across plants and and that's all we ate. And then we had lots of fish. And there were times we had no food. So we fasted for long periods of time. I bet you that's what we're going to end up end up with in the future. Is okay, but I tell you what, yeah. for sure, it's not going to be a diet that's high in processed foods. That's for sure. Nope. <laughs> Next question is from Gimme Cashews. What is each person's enneagram type? Did any of you do this yet? I never. I did this I, a long time ago. Yeah, and I forgot. I'm hoping you guys remembered. Yeah, it's a neogram. A neogram. Yeah. So you have the different types of personalities that it was just highlighting through that whole like yeah, diagram. Yeah, no, this question has came up multiple times. I've wanted to answer it, but I haven't had the time to sit down and actually do this. You like, got to take a long test uh to determine what Yeah, your I haven't I haven't done the test. Who picked this question? Yeah, so out? there's peacemaking, there's perfecting, there's cooperating, there's achieving, there's designing, thinking, troubleshooting, exploring, and asserting. So that was like the nine points of this like diagram. And then people are like a combination of them or whatever because right. you, you answer questions. and Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys feel about tests like this that try to, to break down what type of person you are? You know what I mean? Or, yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at too. It's like, um, what does it matter? Because you can shift from one personality to another, I think, pretty fluidly. Like, I, depending on the circumstance and desired outcome, like, you know, do I need to be more assertive in this moment? Do I need to, you know, like uh, be more uh, self-critical in this and, and, and like step back? Well, did you guys fall into a profession that aligned with probably the one you took when you're, because I took one in high school, like a personality test that was supposed to like tell you what jobs you you best fit in did you guys take one of those oh, when you were a kid no it reminds remember. me of that like I'm, mm-hmm. what i'm alluding to is it reminds me of stuff like that right yeah. and i i mean it mine i did i was it, it was definitely uh along the lines of sales and i forget what I, but it was jobs that i ended up doing people stuff with people stuff with communicating talking sure. uh sales like those were all the the areas that they said that i would excel mm-hmm. in and that was as a kid when I took that test in, in high school. And so I think it kind of helps maybe somebody who's not maybe sure of who. You, you know why I don't like these tests? Uh, because, first of all, people change quite mm-hmm. a bit. But also, I feel like it, it, if you're a kid or you're an adult even, first of all, everybody likes to hear about themselves. That's why these tests are so popular. If, if I wanted yep. to get a shit ton of clicks, if I did a Facebook ad and I want a lot of people to click on it, I'd be like, hey, Find out what your favorite color tells you about your fitness level or some shit like that. Or what kind of person are you, a squatter or a deadlifter? Take this quiz. People love to hear about themselves. Or even somatotypes. Yeah. I, I, I kind of attribute it to things like that where you're, you're trying to simplify a lot of these characteristics and, and really attach yourself to them. But in reality, you probably have a lot of all of it. Yeah. And, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, in my opinion. I think it's no different than a placebo when... You go and you do a test and they say, hey, we're going to give you this drug. And it's not a drug. It's a sugar pill. Yeah. But it's going to make you feel a particular way. And a large percentage of people feel that way. So let's say you're a kid and you get this test. And the test says, you would be a great you know, artist or something like that. And the kid's like, yeah, I think so. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And they start to push themselves in that direction. And, and they try to become what they're told that they're most likely to be. Or maybe they move away from, oh, yeah, this says I'm an artist. And I knew I didn't like math. Yeah, fuck math. I'm not going to even try anymore or whatever. That's what. That's one of the problems I have with with tests like this. Is I feel like it. it people they, they read it and they think, okay, this is what I'm going to be. I like. think it's good though, like it, in terms of if somebody's interpreting this for you, because it's like it's feedback from somebody else perceiving who you are. So then you kind of you get a different perspective in, in terms of what you're internalizing. Like this is who I am right. versus somebody else. Right. I, this I, is how you perceive me. I don't know why we. I wish I would have known this was a question. We should have taken this test. It's only 35 questions. Yeah, we should take the test right now and just see. I think that's the the reason why people are asking. They're just curious. I don't curious think it's what I don't happened. Think, yeah, yeah, I don't think people are asking. You like, want to take it? Do you want to do the test real yeah, quick? Let's, we'll do little, let's put it on pause. Yeah. Little, little edit magic. Yeah. yeah. So we took the test. I think we all got our results. Yeah. I hope it's a good site, though. You think this is a good site? 
What do you mean? We did it? I don't know. Ooh. It says it's 1.5 million people have done it. Some of the biggest Top brands like types. Nike, Disney, Amazon have all done it. So I don't know. It seems credible. No, no. This site, though. The specific site. That's what I just said. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's what oh, it okay. says if you read. Oh, cool. Um, that's what that's what the site said. So it, it it breaks it down in your top three. It says you may okay. identify with more one hmm. more than one the other, but it's organized in your top three right. of what you are. So hmm. my let me, I want to hear what you guys are. What's your what's your three? My top is the Challenger Type Eight. So that's mine also. Yeah, and then the Helper was Type Two was right after that, and then the Enthusiast. Okay, so I'm Challenger Helper the Reformer. Hmm. I'm a helper, enthusiast, and reformer. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so, so what's the refor- what's the enthu- Did you guys get seven or no? No. Enthusiast. Yeah, yeah I got that. Yeah, but wh- okay. Did you guys get helper? No, you didn't. Adam. I got helper. I got helper. Oh, you did. Mm-hmm. So we all got helper. We uh-huh. all got a reformer. No, I didn't get reformer. I'm a reformer. You so did we, get a reformer. We all have something in common. So Justin and I both are challenger we for one. We challenger for number yeah. one. Yeah. So read the challenger because I don't know so what that is. So here's challenger, okay? So how to get along with me. Stand up for yourself and me. Be confident, strong, and direct. Don't gossip about me or betray uh, my trust. Be vulnerable and share your feelings. See and acknowledge my tender, vulnerable side. Give me space to be alone. Hmm. Acknowledge the contributions I make, but don't flatter me. I often speak in an assertive way. Don't automatically assume it's a personal attack. When I scream, this is fucking spot on for me yeah. for sure. When I scream, curse, and stomp around, try to remember that's just the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I like about being that's an like eight, old school me, being independent and self reliant, being able to take change and meet challenges head on, being courageous, straightforward, and honest, getting all the enjoyment I can out of life, supporting, empowering, and protecting those close to me, upholding just cause. And then what's hard about being an eight, overwhelming people with my business. Scaring them away when I don't intend to, being restless and impatient with others, incompetence, sticking my neck out for people and receiving no appreciation for it, never forgetting injuries or injustices, putting too much pressure on myself, getting high blood pressure when people don't obey the rules or the things they get right. Mm, That's interesting. interesting. Yeah, because I pulled up another site that talks about the challenger. And it says there's there this personality type or essentially That's un- what I just read. Yeah. Th- did you no a different site? Oh, well, I just read all the things yeah, that, that were about a challenger. Yeah, so this other site kind of just talks just about like their their instincts and their physical appetites and all that stuff. Interesting. I wonder how accurate this thing is. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. interesting. Did that well, feel that feel like it, it, it talked felt about spot on? I felt like a lot of it, but yeah, spot you know. spot on for me. It's that was my number one, right? So what's your what's your? Uh, yeah, I think I was more of a blend of like. I mean, that's definitely part of it. Then the helper, I think, uh, you know, that's sort of the double side of the coin for me, for sure. So mm-hmm. this is like almost the. Uh, you know, more the nurturing side. Yeah, of it that. says helpers are warm, concerned, nurturing, and sensitive to other people's needs. Interesting. Mm. Uh, what was it, was you had one that neither one of us had, Sal? The enthusiast I had, so did Justin. I had that, yeah. The reformer you and I both had. Oh, okay, so yeah. What's the enthusiast? Why don't you read that one, Sal? The enthusiast is are energetic, lively, and optimistic. They want to contribute to the world. Um, so uh, you know, basically that right there. Mm-hmm. Give me companionship, affection, freedom. Engage with me in stimulating com- conversation and laughter. Appreciate my grand visions and listen to my stories. Yeah, what I like about being a seven, being optimistic, being spontaneous, free spirited, outspoken and outrageous, being generous, why it's hard, not having enough time to do all the things I want, not completing things that I start, not being able to profit for the benefits that come from specializing, having a tendency to be ungrounded, getting lost in plans or fantasies. Interesting. Yeah. Now there's is there eight or nine of these? I think there's like eight of them. There's yeah. Eight of them? I think so. We all share some pretty similar well, traits. So. All of them. It's yeah. kind of interesting that there's there's not one thing that one of us has that doesn't share that in common with the other one. Yeah. Yeah. But all but none of us are all well, you got, we're not all exactly the same though. We're no. kind of split, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> <That's> weird <laughs> Makes man. sense. Yeah. See, like I said, you like to hear about yourself. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Associated yeah, all yeah. there. I want to see one of these. You know what I want to do? I want to do one of these the tests. I want to do what it's like a horoscope, right? Every time yeah. you read your sign, it's good stuff. They'll never say shit like, oh, you're you're an asshole. Yeah. You're yeah. a piece of shit. You're lazy. You're, like I would love to make one. You're a total wuss bag. That where you know, oh, people would be like, Oh, I'm a seven, then they yeah. read it and it's like, Yeah, you're a lazy ass. Yeah. Like, what the f- <laughs> this is not true. You know what I mean? It's yeah. always gonna be true. You're a nihilist. When you like that kind oh, of man. stuff. What about you were all in the horoscopes there for a second, right, Adam? Uh, your- I, well, I remember I dated this girl when I was like 23 or 4, never even like read a horoscope up until that point, and she was like hardcore into it. 
And she introduced me to this website that would allow you to put um, your horoscope in and your the person you were dating or whatever, and then it would tell you all the positive things and then all the negative things yeah. about that pair. And boy, I tell you what, I went back and I like, you know, I knew all my girlfriends in the past, like their. You birthdays. started doing all that. Yes, yeah, so I started putting them all in, and shit, you not like <laughs> the things that were good about the relationship were like spot on. The shit that like was not good in our relationship was yeah. like in the right. So I thought that was really fast. Yeah, I, I I don't believe in it, but I will say this: if if you read the description of Aquarius, which is what I am, it's so fucking accurate. Oh, yeah. It's really it's fucking hilarious like when i read that shit i'm like whoa well, that's weird to man. me that's the part that i find i find yep. fascinating everybody really agree and they're different if you read aquarius's and you read scorpio's very very different when you read them mm. and so and i identify 100 percent with what i read so i, I don't know I, I think there's a little bit truth to what you say which is you know when you write it in a positive light yeah you know you identify all of a sudden the things that that stick out to you like oh yeah i'm like that yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm confident. I'm yeah. strong. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. You know, so I think they do a good job of I'll put up with shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Writing it in a way that like everybody kind of wants wants to already naturally identify with it. And then if it hits some things yeah. right on the head, it's nice. And people change depending on circumstances. Like totally. uh, I know some people who if the if the situation calls for them to become bold and lead, they do. Right. I know people who, if the situation calls for them to not be, they won't be. I know, you know, I my I have a my sister was the shyest, most introverted kid growing up, um, and then uh, you know she had a very challenging time when she was in fourth grade, and she just decided I'm going to be a different person, and mm -hmm. from then on became this very outgoing extrovert and it was like this crazy switch you, you know, could totally can. reinvent yourself too you totally can and I, I think it depends on what drives it so yeah. and that's what i find exciting to be quite honest totally yeah so with that look go to mindpumpfree.com and download some free guides there's a lot of free fitness guides that are available there some teach you how to build your arms sculpt your body your midsection there's even a guide for personal trainers it's all at mindpumpfree.com you can also find us on Instagram, that's where we have our own individual pages. Justin can be found at Mind Pump Justin. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>